building a home projection show begins with having a series of masking sets that are mapped to your house. In today's video I'll be showing you how I prefer to build my masking sets out, using DaVinci Resolve's Fusion page. Here we are on the Edit page. Let's create a new timeline by selecting File, then, New Timeline. Name this timeline, House Mask. Ensure Use Project Settings is checked. This way all of our settings from the previous video in this series will be automatically applied to the new timeline. Then, click Create. Here we have one video, and one audio track. Let's rename this first video track by clicking on it, and call it, Base Layer. Locate and import your map file by dragging it directly onto the Edit Page Timeline. Extend the duration of the map file on the edit page timeline. I recommend extending this to a length of time between 2 to 5 minutes. We will cover why in a future video. For now I just need you to trust me, and give yourself the wiggle room. Next, open the Fusion page by either selecting this icon, or right click on the map file, and choose, Open in Fusion page. Let's do a quick Fusion tour. In the middle we can see our preview panes for what we are building. I like to keep the screen on the right focused on the final output, which is represented by the Media Out node. Underneath is a toolbar with the most common tools used in Fusion. There are hundreds of other tools available, but these are the ones you're most likely to use when building out anything. Underneath the toolbar is the Nodes pane. This is where we will be adding nodes that will ultimately build our show. We will go over best practices for building with Fusion nodes as we work through this series. On the right hand side, we have the inspector. This menu is used to make modifications and changes to any fusion nodes we have selected. To the left is our media pool, which will have any video, image, or audio files imported into them. For now we just have our map file and the timeline we created. In the future, we will be adding a folder structure to this in order to stay organized. If we ever want to preview something else in the final output, we can select a node and hit the number 1 on our keyboard to display its output in the left preview pane. To zoom in and out on the preview pane, hover your mouse over either one of them, hold the control key, and then scroll your mouse wheel forward or backward. You can return to a normal view by opening this menu and selecting Fit. If you wish to focus only on a single pane, select this icon to switch back and forth between single and double. Finally, you can navigate around both the nodes pane and preview panes by clicking and holding down the middle mouse button and moving your mouse in any direction. Let's start building out our first home mask. For this, we will create something I call a fusion tree that will help us keep organized while working within fusion. Disconnect these nodes by clicking on the connecting line and then dragging it away. Select the background node located on the toolbar and drag it down underneath the media out node. This will form the roots for our fusion tree. Then, connect it to the media out node, which will form the trunk for our tree. With the background node selected, Head over to the inspector, and bring the alpha down to zero. You can see we now have a transparent plane in the preview window. This is an important step to remember when starting a new tree, especially when we get to layering later on in the series. With the background still selected, click on the merge node located on the toolbar. This will automatically add a connected merge node. Merge nodes are meant to combine two things together. Anything connected to the yellow arrow on the merge node is a background while anything connected to the green arrow on a merge node is a foreground. Merge nodes must always have something connected to their background arrow, but they do not require something connected to the foreground. As you work through your build, if you run into an issue where something is not visible, check your merge nodes to ensure you have something connected to the background. If so, check to make sure that you don't have a foreground connected to the background arrow and vice versa. Let's reconnect the media node that contains our map file to the green arrow of the merge node. Now our map reappears, and it is technically on top of our transparent background node because it is connected to the green arrow. Select the merge again, then add another merge from the toolbar. Move this up a bit to give yourself some space. Bring down another background node from the toolbar but don't connect it just yet. Just leave it off to the side. Use the inspector menu to change the background node's color to anything you want for now. Bring down a polygon node from the toolbar menu and place it to the right of the merge node. Don't connect this one yet either. 
zoom into your preview pane that is displaying your map file and find an appropriate starting point. Click on the previewer, move to another point and click again to begin creating your mask. Keep clicking around the lines of your map to extend the polygon mask. Navigate around by holding down the middle mouse button and drag your mouse. Add masking points as you move around your map file. At this point I've come to a section of the map file that represents some bushes in front of my home that will ultimately be blacked out completely. So for this mask, I don't need to worry about masking around them. Instead, I'm going to just strike a line straight through this section completely. Once you've gone all the way around your map file and come to the point where it will reconnect, you should see the circle icon. This means your mask is going to close off once you click on it. If you don't see it, you're not closing off the mask. Make sure this is visible for your final masking point selection. Let's set the previewer back to fit. Now, connect your polygon mask into the blue arrow of the merge. Then connect your background node to the green arrow. We've now created our first fusion tree. Everything is connected to the main trunk of the tree. We can think of any of these lines connected to the trunk as a tree limb. And any tree limbs that are connected above the others are more visible than any tree limbs located below. We've also built in a series of switches we can use that will let us enable or disable a masking set. Simply select a merge node connected to the trunk. Then in the inspector, click on this red slider. Doing so will disable any foregrounds connected to the green arrow of that merge, but will retain the backgrounds that are connected to the yellow arrow. Before we wrap up this video, there are a few more tricks for working with polygon masks that you should know. First, let's look at how we can remove a portion of our mask. Here I have a section that I don't want to project onto. One option for removing this from the build out is to use another polygon mask. With the current mask selected, Add a new polygon mask from the toolbar. This should be automatically connected in front of the first mask. Select the new polygon node, and then create a mask in the area you don't want to project onto. Now, within the inspector, change the paint mode to subtract. Once we reconnect the background node, you can see that the area we subtracted is no longer colored in. In future videos, I will be showing you how we can accomplish the same thing using a blackout layer instead of using subtraction masks. But this will come in handy down the road when you start to build out detailed shows or effects. Finally, be aware that polygon masks come with automatic key framing which we want to disable. Select each polygon mask and ensure you are on frame zero. Then in the inspector remove this red diamond to disable the key frame. Now, if we make any adjustments to the mask and we happen to be on another frame in the timeline, we won't accidentally animate the mask. The adjustments will apply to the entire timeline. If you already created a series of masking files using either Photoshop or GIMP, you can use these instead of using the polygon masking nodes. Simply import your masking files into the media pool and place them onto the nodes pane. Connect the masking file to the blue arrow. Depending on how you created your mask file, you might be good to go at this point. However, if the result looks like what I have here, Select the merge node it is connected to. Then in the inspector, select settings, and check, apply mask inverted. You can see this works out just fine, but my personal preference is to use the polygon nodes, which will allow me to make adjustments if needed down the road, without having to reopen and edit any masking files to make those adjustments. Our first layer is now completed, but we can do additional layering if desired which we will be covering in future videos in this series. In our next video though, I think it's time to have a little bit of fun and create our first very simple display. In the meantime, remember to subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks on using Resolve to create home projection shows.